So we've seen the definition of a group as a set equipped with an operation that satisfies a bunch of axioms. And we've now introduced this thing called the Lie algebra of a matrix group. So what kind of mathematical object is that Lie algebra? Well, it's a Lie algebra. Um, as in, there's a formal axiomatic definition of a Lie algebra, of which this is one particular example. So here's the, here's the definition. A Lie algebra um, is a vector space, which I'll write as little g, um, equipped with an operation. map which is denoted by brackets and this eats two elements of G and outputs one element of G so it's written as a map from G times G to G uh, satisfying various axioms so first of all uh, this is supposed to be a bilinear map now I should say first of all we've got to specify what field we're working over so this could be a real Lie algebra, in which case this will be a real vector space. It could be a complex Lie algebra, this will be a complex vector space. You could imagine more exotic things, just change the field you're interested in. For us, we're mostly going to be talking about complex or real Lie algebras. So first of all, I want this bracket to be a bilinear map. And this is bilinear with respect to the field that we're working over. So let's just assume this is over R for now. What does that mean? It means that it's linear in both entries. So like AX plus BY bracket Z equals AX bracket Z plus BY bracket Z. So in other words, you can expand these brackets the way you want to in both the first entry and the second entry. So X bracket AY plus BZ is also equal to uh, a x bracket y plus b x bracket z. Second, um, for all x in the Lie algebra, we want x bracket x equals zero. That makes sense if you think about matrix commutator bracket, um, because x x minus x x is always zero. So that's what this is abstracting. Finally, um, there's the Jacobi identity, which is less obvious. It's not the kind of thing you just think of off the top of your head. Um, and that says for any x, y, and z in the Lie algebra, x bracket y bracket z plus y bracket z bracket x plus uh, z bracket x bracket y equals zero. Uh, so the way to remember this is, remember the first term, x bracket, y bracket z, and then just cyclically permute x, y, and z, and add up the three things that you get, and that's supposed to be equal to zero. So this is a bit like the associativity law for groups, that's how it's used. Um, and well, let's see, where does it come from? Well, it's true for matrices. So all three of these things are true for, for the um, commutator bracket. All three hold for commutator bracket. On matrices. But the thing is that a Lie algebra just has this operation of brackets. It doesn't have to have an underlying multiplication where you can multiply the matrices and take the difference. Um, so this is a more general setting in which you can make sense of this. So here are some remarks. First of all, point two um, implies that the bracket is anti-symmetric. In other words, x bracket y is minus y bracket x. And you can see that because the way you prove it is you take x plus y bracket x plus y because you're bracketing the same thing with itself, this is zero. You use bilinearity to multiply it out and you get x bracket x plus y bracket y, both of which vanish, plus x bracket y plus y bracket x in cross terms. So 
this vanishes, this vanishes, this vanishes, and all you're left with is x bracket y plus y bracket x equals zero. So that's anti-symmetry. The converse also holds if you're working over a field whose characteristic is not equal to two. In other words, if you can divide by two. And the way you see that is, well, x bracket x equals minus x bracket x. If you're anti-symmetric and you switch x and x, the sign changes, that's what I'm saying here. And this tells you that adding the right-hand side to the left-hand side, you get two x bracket x equals zero, which if you can divide by two is enough to tell you that x bracket x is zero. But if you're working, uh, say, over z mod two, which is an absolutely respectable thing to do, um, then you can't divide by two and you, you don't get this implication. So that's why we assume this form of anti-symmetry, the x bracket x equals zero, because it's stronger than just anti-symmetry. Um, just one more thing, so definition. Um, a sub-algebra or Lie sub-algebra, h inside g is just a subspace of g such that for all x and y in little h, the bracket of x and y is also in h. So that then if you restrict the bracket to just elements in h, you stay inside h. So that's what it means to be a sub-algebra. And so all our algebras, or all our examples, are sub-algebras, Lie sub-algebras, of little g l n r the Lie algebra of all matrices with commutator bracket. So in particular, once you've proved the Jacobi identity and the anti-symmetry and bilinearity for the commutator bracket, it follows for all the examples of you know, algebras, Lie algebras of, of matrices. It, they just inherit it from the properties of the commutator bracket. So it's an exercise for you to check the Jacobi identity and the anti-symmetry for the commutator bracket. One very final remark that we are not going to prove, but if you're interested, perhaps you could do a project about it, is that the converse is also true. So this is Ado's theorem, or Ado, I don't know how you say it actually, Ado's theorem. This says any finite dimensional Lie algebra over a field K this could be the reals, could be the complex, or anything else, is a Lie subalgebra of GLN for some N. So we really, at the level of Lie algebras, we really don't lose anything by restricting to matrices. Right, for Lie groups, okay, there are some Lie groups that aren't matrix groups, but for Lie algebras, all finite dimensional Lie algebras are really, you know, can be realized as Lie algebras of matrices. So this is a hard theorem. I'm not gonna prove it now. <laughs>